Hi, this video is about how to use the price predictor template that is new for June 2015. As you can see, I'm in the new this month category. I'm looking at 2015 June, and I see that uh, the June price predictor template is the new one. Now, in order to run this template, I need to go to the category where the template belongs. And as you can see here, it's called the Pro Tools category. So I look on my right hand side, go down to Pro Tools, find price predictor template select it and here are the options that you can use for running the template. First off you can choose the from and to dates. Now from and to just determine how far it's going to run the backtest. Price prediction is all about looking at historical events and over a time frame that you choose and that's how, where you choose it here in the from and to. And then seeing how stocks react for certain numbers of days after those events uh, over that time frame and then it arrives at a prediction which is essentially an average of all of those occurrences for the the individual stocks so you set your from and to dates in here you can just click on the the cell and you can type a different uh, date in here if you need to uh, by default it's it's just running for the whole of 2014 the important thing here is the event script uh, the script is really what determines the event that you're looking for in order to figure out if there is any um, edge associated with that event. And so you have to type the name of the event script in here. Now this refers to scripts that exist in the script library. And you'll always see the script library if you bring up the chart designer window. And over on the right hand side there is a little tab here called chart scripts. If we open that up, we'll see there are scripts. There is my scripts, which are basically scripts that you've written yourself. There's system indicators, which are things like moving average and so on. And then there's system scans. And scans are the scripts that generate events. And so you can actually use any of the scripts that are in here uh, with the price predictor template to try and see if they have any predict ability. So right now we're using cross above the upper Bollinger Band as you saw and in order for me to know the name that I need to put in the template one easy way to do that is to actually just drop the or double click on this scan script you'll see all of the events are down here indicated by the blue event line and then if I want to find the name of the script to use well first of all you can see it says it right here AUBB that's not always reliable and what the best way to do it is to click on formula parameters and then take a look up at the tab in formula parameters and so the, you can see the exact name to use here is scan.aubb open brackets and then set your parameters in there is a uh, it's always good to change one of the parameters to make sure that this fills in properly so now that you can see the name that I want to use if I'm using parameters for Bollinger Bands of 20 and 2 the name that I want to use in the template is scan.aubb open brackets 20 comma 2 close brackets and as you can see that is the actual default that's set in here but say we want to run a different one let's choose um, for example we can let's just choose a random one here ADXU double click on that see where the events are and so I click on the area down here where I've got ADXU then I look I change one of the parameters to make sure that the name fills in properly and then I can see that the name to use is scan.adxu14,20. So I just uh, change this, scan.adxu14,20. If you've written your own script, they will appear under My Scripts. And if it's an event script, meaning that it generates one or zero value when the event occurs, then you can use it with the template. So there's a test scan in here, which basically I don't think has any events, so it's really not worth testing. Uh, but just an example of how you would find the name for the anything that you've put in your own scripts. Select it, look up here, and it says my.testscan. So that's the big difference. If you've written your own scripts, they will always be prefixed with my dot instead of the system scans, which are prefixed with scan dot. So uh, yeah, so if you write your own scripts, which I encourage you to do, then you want to use my dot in front of the script name up here. So after you've decided on the script that you're, you're testing, 
you choose whether in doing the back test over that period of time whether you want to go long or short uh, and then you've got a couple of choices for how you want to choose the entry you can enter at the close of the day that the signal occurs or you can enter at the next open you just change the text in here and then you can choose to exit at the close after a certain number of uh, bars have occurred or exit the next open after a certain number of bars have occurred and those number of bars are determined uh, by the next three cells the last set of options and this is where you can really uh, multiply the number of calculations that are doing and it can get so somewhat uh, out of hand if you put large numbers in here then the program is going to do a lot of calculations it will work and, and it will give you great information but the more uh, data points you are extracting the longer it's going to take so I can say vary my hold period from two days through to ten days and report back every one day so what that means is I'm going to after the event has occurred I'm going to hold for uh, two days, then I'm going to hold for three days, then I'm going to hold for four days. Each one of those is going to produce a, a column in the report. If I wanted to run it for one year and get the results after every week, what I would do is I'd say very hold period from uh, say two days to 255 uh, trading days and then report every five and that would that would give uh, that interval you could say report every one there and then you'd actually get 252 columns but let's leave it set at these settings here all I've done really that is not the default setting is change the event script to scan ADXU 1420 all right now I've got that set uh, I've chosen a symbol list and I've chosen a list here that doesn't have that many symbols in just because I want to run this fairly quickly to show I only have 20 uh, ETFs in this list but again you could run this on a list with a thousand stocks and you could choose a longer time frame to run it on you could choose to report m uh, multiple columns and so uh, you can end up generating a lot of data the more data you generate the longer it's going to take let me run this you can see it's processing this fairly quickly each one of these indications down here in milliseconds is the amount of time it's taking to run one simulation and it's uh, actually finished now and has come up with the report so the report is showing me basically from two days through to ten days reporting every single day what the average is in terms of the percent gain or loss after that event has occurred and it's given me a report for a row for every symbol that's in my symbol list and of course like most reports in EdgeRater you can sort by any of the columns you can do filtering if you desire to do filtering on columns and it gives a color coded indication of the results so let's take an example and uh, find out what this number actually means so I'm looking at column F in this spreadsheet which is got the, the heading 5 so I know that that is a 5 day hold period so after ADXU event has occurred uh, during 2014 remember we, we ran it from the first to the uh, to the last day of 2014 the average gain for EWZ after that hold period was 2.4 percent so and you can go back and look uh, at this in sequence so you can say after two days there was a 0.7% gain after three days there was an average of a 0.4% after four days an average of a 1.7 and so on and so you can see it build, it's generally building up and then tapering off and you can take an example here of the FXI which is the FTSE China 25 index fund iShares and you can see that that has a different characteristic in that after two days it was a negative 0.1% after that event occurred on average through 2014 and then building up into a bigger negative uh, uh, gain or I should say a loss um, and then tapering off although the last day the 10 day hold period is the biggest uh, loss of them all for that one so what's happened behind the scenes is a lot of calculations have happened here and if I bring up my Explorer window, you'll see that in the EdgeRater, uh, so Documents folder, Documents EdgeRater reports, it's actually created for me the summary report, which you're seeing here. That's the actual price predictor um, and then the date.xlsx. And then in the Trade Simulation Reports section, uh, subfolder, 
there's all of the simulations that were run in order to arrive at that summary. So in this case you can see there's 180 simulations have been run and that's basically one simulation has been run for every one of these cells. So count the number of cells, that's how many files will be generated on your file system within that folder. And if you opened any of these up within Excel, then you would see the actual simulations that were made. But there's an easier way to do that. You don't need to have Excel. Uh, if you select a particular cell in here, so I'm selecting EWZ, uh, the five day hold period, and what has happened in the top menu area is the open linked document button has become enabled. I can press that. And that's now giving me the trade list that was generated by running that one particular iteration of the simulation. And there were three trades. These are the dates, the entry dates, March 2014, July 2014, and August 2014. Uh, number of days held, which is correct. That's what we expect because we're in the five column over here. The uh, profit and loss for each of those individual trades. And then the summary cell so this 2.4% is actually showing you the average of these three values right here. So with this open linked document, you're actually getting to see all of the individual trades. And you can, again, with Edgerator reports, they're interactive. So you can double click on a particular uh, cell or click on the view chart button and you will uh, see a chart come that will come up with your uh, selected layout. So if you want to choose your own layout, you have a pref preferred chart layout, you can uh, select it over here or if you just want to have a default chart with no indicators then you could put the chart back to a single chart uh, template. But then what you could say is that you do want to see annotations. Annotations would be useful in this case because what that will allow me to do is scroll down through my list and position the annotations in the area of the window that you want them to be. I want them to appear in the middle of the window here. And what I can do then is those annotations will always be in that same place. So now I can scroll through my list of trades and I can see the entry and the exit for each one of those each one of those trades. Now I'll close the chart down. I'll close down the uh, well before I close down this trade simulation report I'll also note that it includes the trade summary which tells you a summary of all of those trades and as you can see here the average profit and loss in the summary is 2.44 percent that's the figure that is extracted and placed in this summary area on the main report so as you can see the report is extremely powerful it does a lot of calculations you could run it on uh, a list of a thousand stocks you could report for a uh, hundred different columns so a hundred different time frames that you're reporting you would then have a hundred thousand reports generated on the file system but uh, all of the data would be extracted and placed into this summary report now that would take a long time to run and you might want to if you're going to do a, a run like that you first of all might want to test on a small list make sure you've got your script set correctly make sure the results look like what you're expecting and then when you're happy with the settings then choose a bigger list and run it and then you can just leave it and go away uh, and in some cases if you've got a large list it could take hours to run but at the end of that you will end up with a very detailed powerful summary of the results and you can guarantee that probably nobody else has that information that you have just extracted. So it, it will be extremely uh, useful and good information for you to have. So uh, that is the template for June. Price predictor template, it is a uh, backtesting style template and it predicts prices based on past events. And you can imagine that you could also do something uh, like you could create your own script that would pick a particular date of the year and then run this over say 10 years and ask to see the results from one day through to say three months reporting every day and that would give you a very detailed seasonality report so that would be a way of, of getting some additional seasonality information so 
uh, that's the report. I hope that uh, you find it useful. And if you have any questions, uh, don't forget you can always uh, ask on the forum. And, uh, and there are support options on the website too. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Bye now.